Can we even think of a way of relating to art without relying or being influenced in any kind of way by the art critical knowledge that we've amassed more or less consciously? What would it be like to have a relationship with art if art criticism didn't exist? Elizabeth Shellikins of Uppsala University and John Gibson of the University of Louisville are leading a team investigating how the language we use to describe art determines the way artworks convey meaning. Art criticism, in their view, is far more than just reviews of exhibitions and concerts. It's the means by which insight gleaned from the arts is articulated. So art criticism establishes the cognitive power of a work of art helping deliver aesthetic meaning to the audience. How do works of art help orient us in thought and feeling towards the world? How do they help us engage in forms of self-articulation? Our work is focused on the idea that the understanding happens within the aesthetic experience. And the way in which art criticism helps us do that is by giving us the critical vocabulary in which understanding becomes possible. Aesthetic experience is a kind of thought which can involve pleasure, it can involve feelings, it can involve all sorts of imaginative exercises. But that doesn't take away from the fact that aesthetic experience is, first and foremost, a way of relating to the world. When we look at a work of art, we see all these extremely sophisticated forms of meaning. What's mysterious is that those forms of meaning usually cannot be read off the surface of a work of art. Nonetheless, we experience that works of art is suffused with these forms of meaning. Criticism helps us understand how we're able to do that, how we're able to see so much in these objects, like for example, a painting, that's really just a colored surface. The project is a collaboration with specialists in the digital humanities using AI machine learning to track the evolution of key terms as they emerged in art criticism over decades of critical texts from a variety of sources. The Digital Humanities Project will look at how concept clusters arise around certain works of art that have a cognitive value, that tell us something important about how these texts open up new ways of thinking about our ethical predicament, what it means to be human, what it means to know the world. Very, very few empirical studies have been done on how art criticism actually operates. What the Digital Humanities gives us is a way of tapping into the archives and handle that enormous body of knowledge in an efficient way so that we can see when did people start using this particular term in relation to art. What we've focused on in this initial pilot stage are Beethoven sonatas. Of course, Beethoven is a household name for us, but as we've been able to establish, one of the first composers with which one starts using the term revolutionary to describe the art. Thinking of the term profound, that's of course a word we think of as fairly mainstream, but that has not always been the case. Our working hypothesis is that these terms and concepts leave their mark on the way in which we engage with art, what we see in art, and of course, what we learn from art. What we're looking into is the way in which we can, from a philosophical but also an empirical perspective, better understand how art criticism is part and parcel of the understanding and knowledge which art can yield. Criticism is fundamentally a sense-making practice. And in making sense of works of art, great critics are making sense of the world. Our goal is to strengthen the case for aesthetic cognitivism by looking at the philosophy of art criticism and the many ways in which art criticism operates in our engagement with art. And by that we mean not simply perceiving art, but also learning from art.